Negro to me would be one of those great 15 to 20 minute city that we would have where you live one year and everything you need is within 15 minutes. Invest in urban planners, invest in major architects and maybe you could build an entire town. Many developers are creating their own perfect communities. They're building their housing schemes with their gas station, doctor offices. We can't just be thinking small scale investment. Something I want to touch on in terms of corruption, the possibility of paying off someone at the municipality to get a plan approved. What are some of the checks and balances that you have in place to prevent that? At this time, we're going to get into panel number three. I would like to invite Mally Dixon. She is from the Negril and Green Island Area Planning Authority. And as I said, we're now going to be looking at what are the actual building codes and building regulations. Let us all give her a round of applause and make her feel welcome. Hello. <laughs> and as she says, hi again, because we did meet last year. And it was such a wonderful discussion and just understanding the difference between building and regulation codes in like a Kingston and St. Andrew is different from what obtains in Negril. So in terms of wanting to ensure my property is up to scratch by the book, I want you to walk me through the process of what I need before I come and get approval from the local authority. Hi again, as I said, thanks for having the planning authority again. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Torch wasn't able to make it today, but to answer your question, what are things that are needed? Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about what a person needs the most, the first thing that comes to mind is that the person must first know the location that they're building and the zoning and the laws that affects that property. And it is even before purchasing the, pop the property because a person might want to have a five-story, 10-story, however tall they'd want the building to be, and then zoning only allows for two floors at road level. So I do believe that knowing the laws that first governs that property so it's not even before you it's not before you think of the design as the skilled and professional person we we're talking about earlier but it is knowing exactly what is allowed for the property so for that case i don't mind when people call the office and they say hey i have a property in west end mm -hmm. a property in sheffield i have in orange bay or as far as the zone goes to the davis cove bridge up to Spring Mountain, all the way to Jerusalem Mountain, just before you reach the border of Hanover and Westmoreland, back all the way to John's Point and back one mile out sea, you find out what that property allows. And I know currently the new development order is being drafted. So new things are coming. And so what obtains today? What's the different types of zones and how do I, as, how do I find out the zoning okay. So the different type of zones that we have in zones, not necessarily talking about what you and I know to say, oh, zone one, zone two, zone three, but in terms of residential, industrial, um, institutional, there is also residential. And you might want to do quarry, mining, whatever you want to do, those things have to be taken into play. And you might want to put a supermarket, under the supermarket, you want to put a gas station next to a church or a house and there are parameters that has to be placed and thought about before you put the gas station even though you want to supply the person that have the cars with gas there's a distance that you cannot go beyond to build the gas station and you say for that we can call the local municipality to find out where the place is located in terms of which zone it falls under they can and they can also go on the GIS website and they can type in the Negro Green Island area development order 2015 and it tells you specific for what area you are within the zone what is allowed mm -hmm. all right so 
after we have found out which zone mm -hmm. you are talking about the different stories no before i get into the stories you're saying there's a new order coming on stream what are some of the significant changes that we're going to be seeing in the new development order i can see height and density they height and density and it's a lot of a lot of persons are asking about the the changes that they want to see especially on the Negril stretch mm -hmm. where persons are looking to develop and we get a lot of calls about those that section um, So we should see some nice changes What is nice? I can't tell you what, what the nice they? are but I can tell you that I am told by the spatial branch at Nepal That a lot of nice changes are coming. It's not out yet but it, they're looking pretty well the height and density will be it can't be less because currently, if you're on the seaward side and you have property that from the seaward to the landward, so if it's both sides of the road, you're allowed one in one. And what that means is that you're allowed to build the plot area ratio of 100% of what the lot is. However, it has to sit in a cluster between 30 to 40% of the lot. Say that again for like regular people. <laughs> All right. So if you have a lot that stretches across the road and when you calculate the size of that property, it's, uh, I want to put acreage, let's put it's a thousand meters square. You're allowed to have a building of a thousand meters square when you add the floors and it's four floors. However, the width of it, it cannot sit, the footprint cannot sit more than 30 to 40, 33 to 40% 40 of the lot. If, it's, if it spans across the road or just on one side. But if you own the other side of the road, then that is different. Yes. Mm. So that is what obtains currently. Yes. So in terms of making this better, what, who are some of the stakeholders or the lobby groups that you would have spoken to to have this new order that's coming on stream? Well, when persons bringing their plans or the local stakeholders. Some of them aren't, some of them are. Some of the hoteliers that have been here since Negril's inception, some of them love the shantytown look of Negril and the, like, the, the look of having a two-story building. And it's, you know, it's like a, let's, let's say a villa, because what villa is looking like now. Meanwhile, some persons would like to be as tall as Royalton or taller. Because I've we've gotten some um, queries about a five story, a six story. So there is um, differences. Although it is currently, if you want to have the shanty look, or don't think shanty has two shanty now. A simple look, right? The West End is what the order currently states that if you want to have like a villa look, West End is, is what we want to keep looking that way. So we want West End to look that way. That's what the order has now. Mm -hmm. And then along the beach, but not blocking the view of the person on the other side. So the ones closer to the beach will obviously have to stay at a particular height, but those that are on the land... Well, let's right? see. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, if this is two-story, I, I can't... It, it would. And I know that before, and I see a lot of persons that are selling off the landward side... So that was one of the things that have been a consideration by doing the new order. So we would see, because currently on the seaward side, you're allowed four stories above road height. Okay, noted. So look for those new changes. <laughs> Bob, um, when can we expect the new order to come into play or to be adapted? That's a question I cannot answer at the moment, but I do know the first draft is there. So not the full document that is sent out. So I can't speak to the date of it, but I asked and they said soon. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> very, very government-like. <laughs> All right. Now in terms of your, the, so your department, or I know in Kingston, for example, they might have like a building and planning committee. Tell me about your particular department and how that functions under the municipality. So in, let me tell you the process then, if that would help you. So you would have gotten your, your documents, which is your survey, you surveyed your lot, 
and make sure that nobody is on your property. It's, it's still yours, right? Um, you have gotten, you paid your taxes. You ensure that the, when you get a copy of your title, the updated one, nothing has changed on it. And you get the drawings for what you decide based on what is allowed on the zoning. You submit the documents to us, we assess it, we make sure that it can work for your lot, and then we do an inspection of the property. We make sure that what you say you want can actually hold on your lot. We make sure that there's nothing that your neighbor would do that would affect you or you affecting your neighbor. And then we present it to our planning board. And when the planning board, or the, I call it the planning board, when they look at the plan, they assess it and they decide if it can work based on what the order stipulates. And then we send your plan off to the municipal corporation. If it is just a single family development, it goes straight to the Westmoreland or the Hanover Municipal Corporation and they do their processes. If it is a multifamily, if it's a res uh, resort, recreational, institutional, any other type, it goes up to the Town and Country Planning Authority in Kingston. It goes to National Works Agency and also the parish council, but mostly to the Town and Country Planning Authority. And I say that because persons think that when the plans go to Kingston, it goes to NEPA, but it's the Town and Country Planning Authority that works within NEPA. Wow, that's a lot of passing around of the documents, quite frankly. <laughs> um, I didn't know all of that was happening. So in terms of just that part about inspection, how soon can that happen? Do you have like a lot of officers who do inspection or have to wait six months for an inspection? To be no, 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 no. Um, prior to COVID, we would have had a meeting every month. Mm -hmm. So we'd have a meeting every month, which means up until the, so the third Tuesday of every month, it used to be before COVID. And we'd have the inspection before the second Thursday. Now, why I say it like that is because some persons may submit their plans the day before the inspections are to be done and theirs goes through quickly. Meanwhile, somebody would have submitted their plan the day after we would have had the last meeting, so they would have to wait the month based should everything be flowing as it should flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, like you say, it's not a long period of time. All right, I just want to take the moment to remind everyone to put your phones on silence. Oh, my goodness. All right, so the next thing, what are some of the trends you're seeing in terms of things that people are not aware of or they're trying to get away with when the plans are being submitted to you? What I see a lot of persons trying to get away with is that the Airbnb business is is out there and persons, they want to get a little extra money. Persons are trying to do a multifamily and they're seeking single family approval. Mm. And that's not allowed. So the order states that if six or more persons are living together using the same facilities, it's a single family. Six or more. Six or more, living together in one. So you have one main kitchen. You have, you know, the main general facilities, it's one. I'm not talking about the bathroom because some persons want bathroom for each room. But you can't have two kitchens. You can't have um, a complete dead wall separating you from the other section. And then you're telling me that that's a single family. Because the difference is a single family, you need six sets of joints that comes to us. And if you want a uh, multifamily, we'll take at least nine. And TCPA states that they must all be stopped by a registered architect. And it has to go to TCPA in Kingston. But then the, the, the single family it doesn't need a registered architect. Any person that knows how to draw and draw well and we can read and understand can submit. So persons I've been seeing, and it gives me extra work because I then have to be the nice person who collected the plan. Mm -hmm. And now I'm coming to do the inspection and I'm seeing something different. Because as was being talked about before, the contractor cares about the money they're making. So they'll tell you, don't worry about it. You can add another bathroom. You can add another bedroom. You can make changes that are bigger than 50 square feet, which is allowed. Mm -hmm. And that's not allowed. 
And I know persons, if anybody who lives in Jamaica, they might have heard it before, where it is said, once you reach roof, you're okay. Anybody heard that before? You see, that's a lie. <laughs> no. What happens, as I've seen, is when you reach roof height, we ask persons to get an approval. Or, I'm not sure what happened, but when it reach roof height, I serve and expect the person to come into compliance. Mm -hmm. And if you want your house to be insured, don't follow these contractors that tell you you can go against. Because it won't work. So. I see. But let's say I have a dwelling and I want to make changes. My brother, you know, I just want to be separated from him. So I'm not really looking for Airbnb, but I actually want just a separation in the actual structure. How would I go about something like that? You, once you have gotten the approval, do so you want to do it before or after the approval? Uh, after the approval, all right. We're just looking to make it happen. Well, <laughs> you know, I feel uncomfortable when I'm asking that tone, you know, because it sounds, <laughs> but <laughs> um, let's say it's before. It's before, then you would submit whatever you want, because depending on what the lot states, because our titles, they tell us what we can and cannot do. So if it tells you that you are a single family, because some of them state, mm -hmm. if it doesn't and it's a clear title and the zoning allows for multifamily, then you submit nine sets of plans, find a registered architect, mm -hmm. have them stamp the plans, and you submit it. And that's it. And once it is 50% of the lot, then you are allowed to do it. If it is after you'd have gotten your approval and it would not have gotten to the extent of court because I maybe would have seen it before um, it goes um, to, you know, I seen it in the, in the initial stage. I realized that there's a dead wall between I did my inspection mm -hmm. or I realized there's two meters because two meters is a dead giveaway. I would then serve the warning notice and you just come in and so submit for the changes once it is below the 50 square feet, the 50%, sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, and what are some other trends that you're seeing with the developments in this area? Because it's Negril and Green Island yes. in your title. So tell me some of the positive, the good trends that are. Oh, good trends, I can tell you a lot of the good trends. Some of the good trends I've seen because of the major investment in Green Island, that major investment. What is uh, the major investment? The hotel. Yes, the hotel that's there, um, we find a lot of, I'll call them hinterland to ecotourism that are going on. Mm -hmm. So a lot of persons have a chocolate-like type of the trail bike that is happening in and around the area. Yes, so that's happening. That's a trend that I'm seeing going on now. So you would find that you won't have to go all the way to... Is it Sandy Bay or Ochi? You can still have those facilities, not just in John's Point at Jam West, but they're also in Hanover as well. Mm -hmm. And there is also a lot of persons are doing a lot of farming, not just the small scale farming, but large scale farming. The persons with their farmlands, they're utilizing it. And I've seen that persons are doing villas not just doing the residential developments and gas stations. So a lot of ripple effect of um, investment that I'm seeing happening within the area. Maybe I should have asked it in one of the previous panels, but in terms of land that is available for purchase, how would I be able to see that? Which website do I go on? Well, the, the best person would have been to ask the National Land Agency because they're aware of it the lands that are there, but for sale now, it would be best the realtors, you know? Because the realtors are the ones that know when a site goes on, on sale. Because a lot of persons I'm seeing that they're not really renting anymore. Mm -hmm. They are looking to sell their properties now that the hotel is there and I see the prices have gone up a lot. The, the realtors will tell you how the prices that I'm seeing, they've gone but I'd, I'd have to ask them a question. But another question, because it has to do with the value of the lot is one, but then because of the hotel and other amenities that are there now, the lots have gone. The value has, value gone. has gone up. Yeah. All right. So another question I'd like to ask. So in terms of the difference between the Green Island area and Negril, tell me some of, some of those. 
the lay of the land or, you know, just generally what are the considerations when it comes to Green Island and Negril? As it is currently, we would have said that the for Negril, it was started, and I think about it like the center theory, the periphery theory, wherein that Negril started with the hotels and then all the areas that are outside feeding into Negril. So before the big hotel that came in Green Island, we would have seen a lot of housing, a lot of commercial, and you find that persons are just now going into the small scale resorts in that area or townhouses or even the housing schemes. So I would have seen it to be that Negril supplies the hotels or the investment of the hotels and the tourism. And then in Green Island, we see the, the supply, the farmers, the, the, um, the gas stations are on that side of it. Okay, and they both work and in tandem. Yes, they, they both work in tandem. I would say they do. Because you live, and it's not that far. Mm -hmm. it, I know now planners are talking about the 15-minute cities mm. where you live one area and everything you need is within 15 minutes. And if you look at it, if you are working in Negril or you're living in Green Island area where the, the new developments are, many of the things are 15 minutes to 20 minutes away. The hospital in Lucy is about 20 minutes away if you're coming to Negril. So it is, so Negril to me would be one of those great 15 to 20 minute city that we would have. I love that you mentioned the planners, urban planning. I don't know, sometimes, especially on the other side of the island in Kingston and St. Andrew, you would think we didn't have any because everything just happened, pop up, and then you hear about vision some vision that's just not happening. What is happening within the municipality in terms of working with urban planners and sticking to zones for special areas? I am a urban planner, right? And just recently, I was no, long, no longer made the planning inspector. However, now I am the acting physical planner there. And one of the things that we've been looking at to ensure that planning is, is done, because the development order is something that I, I am always proposing and I'm always promoting that persons have or own a copy of the development order. And the reason for that is it's always there. It's always there and it looks as though sometimes that plan doesn't take place. But the order, the orders that are there it's there for persons to follow. It's there for persons to look at before you purchase the lot, before you think of an idea that comes to your mind. Because I know a lot of persons would think about the architects. They think about the surveyors. They think about the quantity surveyors. They think about even the landscape architects, but they don't think of an urban planner. And in, I know that an architect will build a beautiful building However, the urban planner, our duty as it is, is to recommend to persons that, hey, you may want to put this building here, but in the grand scheme of things, when you think of how it will affect down the line, 100 years down the line, it would make sense. You look at what, we, what is there already and how you can better develop what is there for the future. Mm -hmm. So it may be that back in the day, you say persons are looking at what planners are saying, but I do believe no planners are drawn to the table. If you would have looked at the news in Jamaica for the past three, four months, you are seeing the person ask, where are the urban planners? Why aren't they talking? But it's not that we're not talking, it's that we're talking and not many persons are listening. Mm -hmm. So we would say, don't do this development because the housing development of 5,000 houses without, um, the parking consideration without the green area consideration, it won't make sense. But when the calculation is done by whomever is doing it, not as quantity server, but the person that is on the team for the housing development, and they said, okay, we want to supply uh, 3,000 houses. The property can't even hold 2,500. And we have a minimum 
lot area that is allowed of 300 meters square. And they say, you know, I think I can cut off piece and cut off piece. And by the time you finish, you have a 250 size house um, lot. And when we as a planner say, we don't want you to go beyond half of the lot. Everyone begin to complain and they say, no, we don't want that. And they do all that they can. By the time you finish, the planner's voice gets drowned out. So I do believe planners should always be considered. We think of the consultants, seek of a planner. Try to get a planner in, in the table so the planner can, or in the table um, that the, the planner will be able to say to you, that won't work. Okay, so when we hire Conrad as a lead architect, we need to ensure he has an urban planner on the team too. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he gave us a thumbs up there. So you mentioned the development code that is currently here. That's the one that's dated 2015, and there's one that's coming on stream. For other municipalities or other areas and townships, are there building codes for everyone? Well, in general, there is the, the building act that's there. Each municipality would utilize it. There are some areas that have a development order. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I believe Clarendon has one. I think there's one in Manchester. KSM, KSAMC has one as well. Uh, so they're, they're across the country. Spanish, uh, not Spanish town, I think Portmore has one as well. So they're there. And I believe, you know, just try, look it up, just type in development orders in Jamaica for persons that are looking, and you will see them coming up, and it tells you what you cannot, can and cannot do. And not just the Housing Act, or not just the Building Act that is there, and some of them are in drafts, but they're there as guidance right across the country. What are some of the things you'd like to see us as citizens stop doing when it comes on to building our properties? Or what do you wish we knew more about? What I wish we knew more about is that I know it is your property and I know you have a dream of what you, you close your eyes and you see that empty lot and you say to, my, to yourself, I just want what I want on this property. I wish more persons would not just consider the cost of the building, but consider how the building that you have will affect those around you, how it will affect the future. And as an urban planner, I have to think of you know, how it will affect in the future. Not just say, I'm going to build, and whatever comes to my mind, I'm going to build it, because it does impact on others, you know, not just, because development is not just to just dig up and build. It has to do with how it affects you, your neighbor, and not just your neighbor next to you, but the neighbor in the community, and as far as even the region. Mm -hmm. I know that persons will say, it's my lot. I want to build a five-story building, but you have to think of your neighbor. And I think persons should really think of how this building affects those around me. Um, something I want to touch on in terms of corruption and, you know, the possibility of paying off someone at the municipality to get a plan approved. What are some of the checks and balances that you have in place to prevent that? So at the Negro and Green Island Local Area Planning Authority, because we don't just have one officer assessing the property, we have different levels of assessment that is done. So the planning inspectors, which is no longer planning inspectors, they're assistant physical planners. Mm -hmm. What is done is that all developments are monitored for the life of the building and the property. That's one. Mm -hmm. Then when persons come in and query for the property, that goes on our list. So it's not just when it is submitted. So after that goes on our list, we then look at it. So we say, okay, somebody came and asked about travelers and they want to know what I can do for travelers. Immediately travelers goes on our list because we want to make sure that, you know, what is there is, is approved. Then after the plan comes in, the Aston physical planners monitor that property. Then we, so you have a, the internal meeting that we talk about that property that is before us. Then afterwards, the building is then monitored throughout the life of the construction. When it is finished, we still have access. So we do have access, not just because it's your private property. Mm -hmm. The law gives, gives us a, um, approval to monitor the property, and we monitor for the life of it. 
So some persons might just want to say, oh, I can pay off this one person and it allow me to add an extra bedroom and an extra bathroom. But the, the nice thing about this locality is while you have the municipal corporations on either side, and they might say, that's okay. You still have to remember that the Negro Grand area may not be a part of that negotiation if there's a negotiation. And we're going to monitor and we're going to make sure that we serve should there be a, a negotiation that would have been done. So we monitor and we change. So we don't have the same officer monitoring that same property. So we change them by quarter. So there's so much thing that is done to make sure that, you know, our officers would not be called in any question. And, you know, it is something that we recommend should be done that different persons go about and monitor the buildings so you don't have any corruption or however they might think it should happen. And I don't think we should want corruption to happen because see, we had the earthquake the other day. Mm. And when we think of how... Um, we might say, oh, Jamaica is blessed. That's why we didn't have any much um, buildings damaged. You know, being damaged. But when we think of um, some persons might pay off somebody and they pay off the person and they cut this corner and they cut another corner, earthquake comes, hurricane comes. And it's not a board because I've always liked the fact that um, timber frame structures, they dance in hurricane, they dance in earthquakes, but the concrete ones, if it's not built properly, it's going to crumble. So I don't recommend that when you would have gone through all the process and you sit on your nice veranda and an earthquake is coming and because you paid some money, you know, because you know, that one building in, was it St. Mary? It, Portland, right? Yeah, it was said that no approval was given for that building. So it means no inspection was done for that building, which means that if anybody, God forbid, was in that building, they would have maybe died. And then you would think, so it's not just to say, I can't afford to build um, what I, to, to pay the architect to draw what I want, and I'm just going to build and not have a skilled professional monitoring the building. I know it's our property, but when you think of our lives, it does not make sense. All right. Wow, very insightful there. At this time, we're going to open up to questions Questions to Mali. You're going to go to that side for me. And the microphone is going to be brought to you. First question is from St. Aubin Clark. Uh, with three max. One moment, please. Right. Um, so three quick questions. So for, for Nigalpa, uh, first thing I want to point out for maybe um, our attendees who are not aware, Nigalpa is um, sort of a hybrid between two municipal public corporations, which is Nigril actually falls in Hanover and Westmoreland, two parishes. So Nigalpa is tasked with being the, the authority for the Nigril area. What I want to know, what's, what's the physical boundaries that Nigalpa covers? Mm. Oh, I, maybe I was speaking too fast, but I did state that. Oh, when it, you were doing the round the world thing? Yes. So the, bound, the physical boundaries of Nigalpa, the Nigril Development Order area, it goes... So let's start from here. So from here, we go all the way past the new hotel where the bridge is. And then we go up to Spring Mountain, over to Jerusalem Mountain, just as you see the border between Hanover and Westmoreland. And we cut across down to Delphland, um, more Mango Hall. So we go straight down to John's Point, so beyond um, Jam West, and then we go out to sea, one mile out to sea, and back to here. Okay, which hotel you suggest? You the Princess. Hotel? The Princess. That's in Green Island. In Green Island. Okay, okay. All right, great. All right, the next question. So you mentioned about the, the height restrictions or what's allowed for what's on the, the beach side of the road as opposed to the Morris side. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it would seem that 
there is a greater allowance, a higher allowance for the beat side than the Mora side. Am I correct? Right now? Right now, it would. And if it is that you don't own both, both sides. Because mm -hmm. originally, originally, many persons are from the, the, the Negril boundary. So not Negril, not the order boundary, but the Negril boundary. Persons used to own both sides because right. this was the morass. Right. So as for here, you know, both sides of the road is owned for travelers. Many persons own both sides, but then they started to sell out um, the, the land, landward. The, the landward side, and it's because after a while, you know, the morass would have seemed to come closer to them, and persons would want to be closer to the sea than to the morass, and you have to be a hundred feet from the edge of the morass. So persons who are selling out that side of the of their properties, and then it wouldn't it wasn't changed in a way that persons were allowed to get the same one to one for their height for their the height the, the, the floor area ratio. Okay, but but as far as the height is concerned, for the Mora side, it's two. It's just two stories. Two from road from road height. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's half what's allowed on the. Be set. Be set currently. Currently. Yes. All right. So the next question, um, in light of developments that are projected for Negril, and I, I've been hearing um, rumblings about an airport and that sort of thing, um, which based upon where the airport is currently located, um, if that location is going to be maintained, definitely land is going to need to be acquired, which only leaves the morass. Is there any... Any um, plans for more of the Morris area to be acquired by the government or the planning authority in order to make an airport? And that would also, also include, based upon my local knowledge of Negril, a lot of the establishments on the Morris side have actually exceeded their established boundaries and have encroached on the Morris. Is there? Is there? Are there plans to regularize that situation? Because, I mean, the buildings are there already. Hmm. <laughs> so, for what I can say, because, you know... <laughs> yes. So, the, the, what you would know, for the most part, what I know is what was stated in the, the public to state that they were tasked that there should be a or should be a third um, international with well, a fourth because Ian Fleming is one so a fourth international airport in the country and in this side the exact location is not yet uh, it was at the meeting I had it was not yet stated and in risk risk um, when it has to do with the Moras the Research is not yet fully done to decide on the exact location for it. Because though the proposed the development order had a location further inland to put it, that that in itself, the contrast between both location, it has yet to be done. So I can't tell you, and it should be noted that the government does own the morass. So, you know, there are things that would need to be considered when you think about putting in in the airport, which I would love. And I know a lot of things have to be taken into consideration because other persons own their properties. I have to think that there is a height uh, that you can put your building based on having an airport when it should be landing. Um, the other question you had asked. Regarding um, existing structures on that side of the road that have exceeded their boundaries, have encroached on the morass, but they are bringing income, revenue into Negril. I know you're a real, so that's why you ask that question like that, you know. However, um, <laughs> when I, so we've done a lot of, um, so I was, when I just came into the work, we did a research where we asked each person that we would have seen to be encroaching, and we gave our comments to the land agency, and we're still waiting on them to tell us what they're going to do if they are going to allow them to keep the encroachment or they're going to ask them to take it down. Demolish. That's <laughs> a very strong word, but to not use 
<laughs> the government land. Um, but I do believe with the, the re-wetting that is to be done on the morass, a lot of these persons would lose, if you think about it. Because if the morass, it replenishes itself, and I know that water, there's nothing more powerful than water that's on earth. So if the water, it spreads itself, and a lot of these properties, if you look there, the water has been coming in to where its boundaries are. So I can't say that it would be good for them to keep it, and I can't say it would be bad for them to keep it, because if you should just walk it, you will see where the water is coming in to take it back where it used to be. So you're waiting on some... I'm waiting on land agents to tell us what they're going to do. Okay. But I think persons should really not dump, don't dump the government land, but they should really think what they will do if they get those properties that they would have encroached on. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, St. Aubin. Sean? I have three questions, but it's very short. All right. Uh, concerning property tax. Property tax. Okay. Now, in Vegas, where I live, I pay about uh, $1,800 a month on property taxes. So mm -hmm. what are the taxes here? Here or Vegas? No, here. Vegas, he pays up. Here, here. Oh, here. here? Yeah. Okay. You know, when you, when you move into your house and so forth, okay? Depending on your location. I'm not sure I understand pay, what you're saying. Do you pay property taxes here? Yes. Okay. And how much roughly? I know it depends on cost of home and uh, area. Oh, you mean roughly what is the property tax? Variation to property tax in Jamaica. Well, I, I'm not directly in, because I'm not at the Jamaica tax, the tax admin of Jamaica. But as it was stated, it depends on where you are so if you decide to get a property that's in the hinterlands i've seen them as low as five thousand jamaican dollars per per year yes. and if you are by the sea you're seeing them in the millions mm -hmm. per jamaican dollars per year so it depends on where you are and I loved what the, I'm not sure of his name, I don't want, is he still here? Probably the lands, the landscape mm -hmm. architect. Martin. I do, yes, him. I believe as, we, I think we would work hand in hand, an urban planner and a landscape um, architect, because no matter where your property is, you can make or, or have the most beautiful property and enjoy it without wanting to be by the sea. And because of how Negriland Greenland is so beautiful, it's by the sea, even if you're in the hinterland. My mom's home is uh, six kilometers from the sea. And she pays 5,000 Jamaican dollars per year, and it's a quarter acre. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where you are and where you want to be. Okay. Yeah. I think that is mostly handled by the tax. The tax administration of Jamaica. They collect your taxes. Okay. So it depends on where you are, that what, you, what your taxes are. Okay. My second question is uh, concerning investment. As a U.S. resident, can I buy stocks directly from the Jamaican Stock Exchange? That's, I'm not sure. I, I For the stock I'm not sure about the, the stocks, but I, there's a form that is filled out. There are many stockbrokers. Yeah. Okay. Does this want to be here? Oh, oh. Oh, okay, okay. Well, it's fine. Well, yes. One more, yeah. Uh, one more question uh, that I didn't get a chance to ask the last time. I didn't get a... Uh, concerning bamboo. Is there a production company here? Because in the U.S., bamboo is extremely expensive. And, and this would be a good economical boost for Jamaica if they produce the bamboo, you know, and, and sell it on the market. Well, we have a lot of bamboos in Jamaica. Like, a lot of them. Uh, but I don't know of a company that does export. I know a few years ago, Jamaica was looking into exporting the... Um, chopsticks, chopsticks to, there's an MOU that was the, the byproduct. So we do have them here. 
and if you have a property, and I do believe too many persons, they cut down the bamboos for whatever for construction activities. So they're here, because we have the Holland bamboo, which we don't want persons to cut down, but we have a lot of bamboos, even in Hanover, in the zone, we have a lot of bamboos. So if you want to probably drive around, see if you find somebody that owns a property that has bamboos and you want to um, join with them and invest in that, then that would be a good business. So he's giving away some secrets here. So if somebody wants, you have bamboo on your land and you want to sell, you know, you probably could look into that. All right. Um, you're smiling. Um, so the question I have to ask. So the municipality approves development and drawings. I'm humbly suggesting that just like our architect would issue a practical completion certificate that when it is you guys have a project that you would have been monitoring from inception to end in terms of construction, it's about time that the municipality consider issuing an occupancy certificate to that developer, whoever it is. One of the reasons behind it is some of the challenges that you guys are having now. You approve a drawing, maybe you said they don't have enough um, personnel in house to check on all the construction. But whoever that individual is, whether it's a developer or in personal use in terms of private development, they go and change it. And then some of the challenges which you hear about in the news are people doing all sorts of interesting stuff come up. Now you have to realize that the consultants may only be engaged for pre-contract services and not post-contract by the client or the developer to monitor the same. So at the end of the day, is the municipality it falls back on. So you guys need to consider that because once it is that you would have inspected that property or development, you are the ones who are ensuring that whatever it is was approved is being signed off on. And if it isn't, then you guys have the government or whoever to answer to in terms of that. So that's a humble suggestion. What are your, how would you like to respond? I, I, I accept and I welcome his suggestion. And the reason is we do that for hotels. Mm -hmm. We do it for major developments. It is just that it could something I could really implement. However, and it's not a however, houses and what we see happening is persons aren't really able or, and request let me try and put it the best way I can. An architect will design this building, and I see it happening many times. Our draftsman, the owner comes and says, hey, I want a three-bedroom. That's all they say. I don't not like I see an HGTV where they say, I want a three-bedroom. I want to walk in through the front door, and I see I smell food to, the, to this side. I want to know that I'm eating on this side, or I hear the TV around the back. They don't do that. So what they do is, I want a three-bedroom. The, uh, the architect or draftsman, he draws a three-bedroom. The owner now sees the three-bedroom that they have it, while it's been constructed, and it's not what they envisioned, but they didn't tell these persons what they wanted. And, they, and many of them, they change it. So I believe that the process, it should be more... Um, mesh together where you know you find a way to sell um, the design and get them to like what you have or draw what they like because I believe that architects are able to draw um, something that work and will be liked so when so it, it, the monitoring is easy for me and I can give them because they're not getting some of them not getting what they like and then they're changing it. So to, to do the compliance certification for them, it a lot of persons won't get it, based on what I've seen. But to his point, you said you can do this for yeah, major yeah. developments and hotels, so why don't you do it for smaller scale projects? I will speak to my manager about it. <laughs> <laughs> we but will I, follow up. But, but I like the idea, I love it. One of the things you have to realize, you know, when an architect designs something or any other consultant, it is in consultation usually with the client. Now I could say, boy, you know, I wanted a two-bedroom house. And when you look at a 12-bedroom house, it can't be that the, the client just decided to change our developer because they feel like, and you know, that's what their mind told them at the time, point in time. Mm -hmm. So you guys have a responsibility 
to the public and to the persons who may occupy that building, who may not necessarily be the owner, to ensure that whatever it is that you approve is what is built. Because if not, maybe that's how some of the homes them drop down and other things happen. So just say, yeah, I, and from I, the suggestion. I, no, I really accept it. And it's good. it's a good thing to implement, especially the planning authority, because we do have a compliance survey that we do that we fill out. So when the building is approved, from it is approved, we're monitoring that site to completion. It's just that we don't give issue a compliance when it's when it's finished. So it is something that Jamaica could do on a whole. You know, all the municipalities we could look into saying, hey, at the end of this residence, it is a residence and not a villa. <laughs> another point for us to lobby on all right we're wrapping up but yes when you went through the um, stages of the review process you didn't mention the development assistance center I don't know if that's an agency that your authority works with because we're doing something and we found it to be a very useful resource that was referred to us by one of our consultants it is it is and the reason I didn't is because that's in that's at NEPA so NEPA under the under the Town of Country Planning Authority, they have recently started reading the order for persons at only, and I say a measles $5,000 is all they ask J -M -D. for. Jamaican dollars. And I would wish that everybody really, so, so see, Sila. So what happens, <laughs> what happens is that in in it i don't have to go and read it for every person because what would happen is you would to know the zoning you right across jamaica now not just the negro greenal area but right across jamaica you own this property you have a design so you reach out to the architect have the architect draw what you think you want and then they will then ask you to bring that drawing all the locations, so have them find it, probably a survey or even a location map to the property, the volume and folio. And, mm -hmm. and when you, you give them that information, 14 working days later, they would have read the order for you mm -hmm. and they give you a document with suggestions of what would be approved, not that it's an approval. You could do that. So you could either do that or hire an urban planner you know, at not, one is not working in that area because we don't want any conflict of interest. You could hire so and the, the consultant team, you could have the consultant and also the DA, the document assessment center or have a planner on in the project. All right, next question. All right, thank you. Hi. Uh, so we're thinking about acquiring some vacant land in Western Negro, right? First question, how tall can we go if we're planning to do a multi-family development? And um, how many rooms are we allowed per acre, habitable rooms per acre right now? So is it on the landward or the seaward side? It's both. So we, uh, we're in the process of you know uh, negotiation. So part of the land is uh, inwards. The other part is on the cliff. OK. Mm -hmm. So. It's it's two floors up from the road height. So if you it is below the road, then you, you could have three. But if it is so from the road height, you allow two on both sides. It is twenty habitable rooms per acre on the seaward and ten on the landward. Ten habitable room. Inwards? Yes. Wow. That's, that's. <laughs> yeah, um, we have a lot of lobbying to do. Yeah, that's. And that's why we're trying to have the new order. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Do you guys have any plans of changing the, the that? New, the new order, because what happened is the development order is every five years. Mm -hmm. But COVID came, so it should have been to 2015 to 2020. So it's currently being drafted, so the date on it, and this is why I believe that when persons are buying properties, just give us a call, 
4387. Repeat math again. 876 957 4387 or 4473 so that we can tell you what is and isn't allowed. Yeah, I might have to visit your office, but um, <laughs> can we, for example, can we do a, an underground parking? Because I know, you know, part of the green space has to be for parking. If we do an underground parking, right, can we then use that extra space to build more rooms? If you have an underground parking, it has to be, as you said, in West End. And I know West End is on rocks. So if you get one that is you know, on rocks and you can dig down, then that's okay. But if you're at this part of, if you buy it on this side, you would have to do a lot of, um, no, the architect is saying no. End up in a little bit of a pickle. All right. Hello. Hi. I'm Ingrid Vaz with Remax Elite. Um, what I want to ask you, I just traveled from Montego Bay. And coming through Lucy Town, it was, I was delayed like 45 minutes. Is there plans for a bypass, which is absolutely needed? There is plans for a bypass. It, the thing is, how far along is the process? <laughs> That would be nice if you could share with that information. No, I don't have that information. But with the airport coming in the grill, I'm sure that it should be here in and around the same time. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> one, just one more question. Thank you so much. One more question. Oh <laughs> okay, so one more question. Um, in terms of the... Sorry, in terms of the government offices that kind of cause a bottleneck, are there plans to move them to somewhere else that would kind of ease the traffic as well? In which parish? She's in, in Lucy. Lucy. Yes. I don't know, but if more stakeholders may lobby for it, because, you know, in Kingston, you know, we have that centralized, because. With the transformation implementation unit that government now has, a lot of offices have been joined together as one and some seem to be redundant, so they got rid of them and persons got different work. So it may just be a pilot for the rest of the island. Let's see what happens. So you're seeing that corporate Lucy has to lobby to have all of this for done? Everybody. Yeah, the, for every parish, because you know that when you look at how the planning of Jamaica is. Yeah. At one point, everything was for the, the sea, you know, for things to be moved by sea. So all the townships were all in at the, the sea. And I know the Prime Minister, he said on JS recently that new townships are being, being brought on stream and not many of them are by the sea because okay. Jamaica was made, well, not made, well, you could say how it was developed was for the sea, and that's why many of our things yes, are below sea level. Okay. You know, like when you think of Black River, you think of Falmouth, you think of Lucy, all of them are below sea level. So with developing and not getting rid of all the farmlands, yes. we should see more development happening away from those areas. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Real quick. Just, just the last question. Um, for example, in Lucy, right, we're doing our development. Um, based on the density, um, can we lobby for them to increase the density um, for our multifamily development? We're all lobbying for the densities to be, to be increased. And I know, here's my thing though. Persons look at Singapore, persons look at New York, persons look at all these center node periphery theory areas, like areas where you have that one main thing and everybody's doing that urban sprawl, where everybody's going to that major area. And then what happens is that we go to that small area and we say, hey, I want to live here and you need to increase it so I can live here. But I do believe that person should be able to say, let me just see what I can do outside of that, that center area. So don't just ask for, these top-sided and you have 
eight stories in that one area and then you leave the other areas left out. So I, I think that person should use other lands, not just try to be in a crowded area. Because even New York, I would not want to be living there because now this area is somebody's entire housing. Their bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room is here. And then you have the areas where rent and, and, and taxes are so low but persons don't want to be there. So invest in urban planners, invest in major architects, and maybe you could build an entire town. No, I, no, think of, I, don't agree? You can build, and I find that many, many developers are creating their own perfect communities. They're building their housing schemes with their gas stations. They're building them with their, their doctor offices. So we can't just be thinking small scale investment, but we can think large scale as what as your mind can think. Singapore had to do what they're doing with all those high rise and open space because of the small area. And if Singapore is almost as big as St. James, that's just one of our parishes. So we can use the lands that we have. Don't just think of, you know, I just want to be in a small area. Buy a land. That is, I'm saying, like, it's so cheap. But, you know, invest, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's an investment conference. Right. You, know, you know, we want to invest. Invest in those lands that will allow you to build your own perfect area. So, you know, think wider. You know, not just think of the monies, but think of how you can create your own little area. That is such a beautiful note to end on. <laughs> What's going on? Throp here. I hope you enjoyed that presentation from ThropX 2023. If you want to learn more about this year's ThropX, join our mailing list in the link below. And if you want to see another ThropX video, click right here. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.